If you're watching this, I'm dead. This is a code black. This message was automatically triggered when I destroyed the cave and everything it contained. We both know it won't take long for Gotham's criminals to realize the Batman is gone. And you can't count on the GCPD. They haven't trusted us since Jim died. Gotham will need its protectors more than ever. I'm leaving you the Belfry as a base of operations. Some of the technology is outdated, but it has the gear you need and all of my files. You've always had my back when I needed you. I know you'll keep Gotham safe. Good luck. And goodbye. Good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, it's permanently evening. There is no morning, there is no afternoon. You'll find out why momentarily. I'm Ant and I'm here as ever with Mr. Barry the Nuge Nugent. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. Very good. Good. And we're here to talk about Gotham Knights, the recent release from Warner Brothers Montreal, um, which is a Batman game that's I've taken a bit of flack, I think, in reviews and, and had a bit of a bad bad rap. And well, when um, you say we say bit of flack, I mean it's taken it took a lot of flack, I think, from the certainly the kind of the official reviews that dropped. Yeah. Yeah, so so we kind of wanted to, we've been playing it and we wanted to come on and just give people our thoughts because um I I'm, I'm I'm bemused by the whole situation <laughs> at the moment. So yeah, so this is this is our this is gonna be our Gotham Knights chat. Um, yeah. There will be spoilers. There'll be st- story spoilers, but only to a point. Because I know, B, you've not finished yet, have you? So, no, 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 no. So there won't be full-on spoilers. Um, but we will get into the story a little bit, I think, and that kind of thing. But yeah, um, we just want to talk about it because yeah, it's been getting a been been getting a bad rap. So um, I'll hit us with the blurb, mm-hmm. and then we'll get into it. Cool. So. Your legacy begins now. Step into the night with a K. There's a K in that night. Okay. Batman is dead. <laughs> a new expansive criminal underworld has swept the streets of Gotham City. It's now up to the Batman family, Batgirl, Nightwing, Red Hood and Robin to protect Gotham, bring hope to its citizens, discipline to its cops and fear to its criminals. From solving mysteries that connect the darkest chapters in the city's history to defeating notorious villains in epic confrontations, you must evolve into the new Dark Knight and save the streets from descent into chaos. Gotham Knights is an open-world action RPG set in the most dynamic and interactive Gotham City yet. In either solo play or with one other hero, patrol Gotham's five distinct distinct, boroughs and drop in on criminal activity wherever you find it. I think there's a very important line in that, which is one of the things that seems to be up for for debate, which is the uh, the most dynamic and interactive Gotham City yet. Right, table that. We'll get onto it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like, I've been sort of following the. Just give a bit of background to it before we kind of get into our overall thoughts. I've been sort of following the development of this game, like from since you know from the moment they kind of announced it. Yeah. Because, you know, we're both big fans of the Arkham games. And I know this is like a, it's a different game company behind this one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so it's, yes, yeah, so it's basically, it's the team that developed uh, Arkham Origins. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, which was all right. You know, I didn't finish. I don't think I finished Arkham Origins. But like, you know, Arkham Asylum was just a definitive Batman game for me. I absolutely loved that game. Hmm. I enjoyed it. I, I think Arkham Knight was the prettiest, but for me, it was still Arkham Asylum just nailed it. It just it just nailed that Batman experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, it's been a while fair. since I played Arkham City. I can't remember Arkham City as well, but I know everyone raves about Arkham City. And for a lot of people, Arkham City is their fave, but it's been a while since I've played that one. Whereas I think Arkham Asylum is just, even though that one, again, it's been a while since I've played it. It's just etched in my mind. That's the one I remember the most. It it was it was groundbreaking yeah. and it, it it properly yeah it, because it was so um, I mean it was a pretty big game to be fair but it was so claustrophobic yeah that it gave you a different feel to what you often get um, in, in in you know in superhero sort of games. And obviously, sadly, we've lost it now. But you had sort of Kevin Conroy doing the voice and 
Mark Hamill, Mark and... Hamill doing the Joker, and all the re- you know, it 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 was a it was a perfect Batman game. It was a perfect Batman experience in some ways, more so than like, you know, a lot of the films. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. You know, it nailed every aspect of certainly you know the the fighting aspect, but I also liked, you know, the, the detective aspect of it and stuff like that. Yeah, it was just great. Obviously, you know, this isn't an Arkham Asylum review. <laughs> um, <laughs> Stay tuned, but, folks. <laughs> but, but, one of the, yeah, but one of the reasons I was really interested in it is that I love the idea, and obviously we've already talked about spoilers, but I love the idea of taking Batman out of the picture. Yeah, yeah. Um, and focusing on, you know, the, the Bat family and that he's sort of trained to effectively take over from him. You know, mm-hmm. and it's this whole thing. I know it's something David and I always talk about this idea of like legacy. And actually, if you've done a great job with the world building that you've set up, that these stories should be able to kind of continue on, even if the main sort of person that is your route in is no longer in the picture. Yeah, completely. You know, and yes, yeah, so I was really interested in it. I, you know, and I was liking all the footage that was coming out of it. And um, then, you know, I went and saw some of the reviews and I'd already, I'd pre-ordered it. I'd pre-ordered it pretty late, pretty late in the day, but I had pre-ordered it. And I was really, you know, and I saw some reviews and I was like, wow, it was getting, it was getting a hammering. Mm. And I did, you know, I, I would admit it's easy to sort of go, you know, I don't listen to reviews. I don't read reviews and the rest of it. But normally in a lot of those situations, it's big, it's where the reviews are mixed, and I just sort of go, "That's fine," you know. Mm. I'm still going to go with it. But the but the reviews that I'd seen to begin with were so like heavily against it that I did waver a little bit, only a little bit, because at the same time I kind of thought, you know what? So long as I can get to go around Gotham City and kick a bit of ass for a significant amount of hours. If that's all I get out of it, it's still a job done for me. That was kind of how I looked at it. Yeah, it was is that thing was it? Because I think I ordered it a couple of weeks before it came out, and because you'd message me say, "Oh, it's coming out," and I was like, "Oh, I didn't realize it was soon," because I thought it was next year. Mm. Um, and I pre-ordered it, and then you'd said, "You know, oh, I've seen some really bad reviews for it," and I'm like, "Yeah, but the reviews for Avengers were bad, and we both enjoyed that." Yeah, so, yeah. So, so that that's kind of where I came from with it, and I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I didn't cancel the pre-order or anything. Yeah, yeah, likewise. But to be honest, yeah, I'll be. I was going into it with low expectations. I was kind of like, again, it was that my benchmark was because I love a, I love like a fighting game. I love, yeah. I love open world sort of cities and stuff like that. So again, for me, it was I was going in with a fairly low bar as to what I wanted out of the game. Mm. And obviously, you know, cutscenes shouldn't make you know cutscenes shouldn't make a game because you know you've still got to play the game and stuff. So you can have the best cutscenes in the world, but if you if your game mechanics are crap, then the game is yep. still going to be crap. However, um, <laughs> the opening cutscene for Gotham Knights, I, I I just wasn't ready for it. I, yeah. I was you know it it felt like it was epic and it, it was the I, end of a movie. Yeah, it was a proper yeah. climax before you start. Yeah, the impression that I got from a lot of reviews was almost like they'd sort of slap this together just to chuck it out as a bit of a cash grab. Yeah. But to me, when you've opened the game like that, that to me does not speak of a cash grab. No, absolutely not. I mean, I, th- I think in some ways, and you kind of mentioned it yourself, the, the, I think a lot of like, or some of the negativity, I'm not going to say a lot of, but some of the negativity for it did come from the fact that A, it was developed by the developers of what is probably the least well received of the of the Arkham games mm-hmm. but also because it it's whole premise is Batman's dead and spoilers but the ending of Arkham Knight is a bit ambiguous in that regard so I think people had in their head oh it's a new, it's going to be a new Arkham game and it's a follow-up and stuff but it was never right. intended to be that because I haven't because even Amy was saying you know she was describing it to one of our friends and he said is it is it an Ark is it an Arkham game? And he was like, well, and I'm like, no, no, it's not. Yeah. They've deliberately got a completely different casting. The designs are completely different. Gotham City is completely different. The whole background and how it starts is completely different to any of those Arkham things. It's, it's its own beast and you have to look at it as its own beast. And in some ways comparing it to Arkham while it's inevitable is unfair because it's a different kind of game you're not comparing apples with apples with, with apples with apples you know 
I don't want to keep, like you said, I, I don't want to keep going. Arkham did this, and you know, Gotham Knights did that. Um, because I, yeah, I I see the Arkham games where you had the action and stuff, but there was also like a lot of stealth in there. Yeah, and it was just you know, and you had to sort of plan out how you kind of approach things and stuff like that. Whereas Gotham Knights is a far more action orientated game. Yeah, and you say, you know you can do the stealth stuff, and you can approach any of the crimes and any of the missions really sort of how you want. Mm-hmm. And and in some ways, it's it's possibly there where it loses sight a bit for me. In that, because you can do that, you have to make it so that uh, so if you play it in a certain way, no matter what character you're playing as and stuff, it will almost it's inevitably going to feel the same. Yes, and and I and I get the criticisms for that. But the fact of the matter is, like, if you actually put a bit of work in yourself and think about the characters and customise them in certain ways, then, you know, actually, they can play very differently. You know, and, and, and it's, yeah, there is some stealth in there, but it's not, it's not your Arkham level of stealth. No, yeah. no. And I, I, that's what I found, because I'd even said this to you, that, um, so I started off playing, my plan originally was just to pick a character and, and play through as that character. Yeah. which is what I tend to do with most games, even when these those games that they offer you a choice that so you can go back and you can flip back and forth. Because I, you know, I do want to follow the story through. I, I like the idea of sticking with one character and, and following their their journey through the game. Yeah. But then, you know, talking to you, what I realised is you do get slightly different experiences when you're jumping between the characters because you get slightly different cutscenes and slightly different directions. So because you have this idea of you can basically go out for a night where you're kind of fighting crime and you know you're fighting the smaller crimes which again we'll come on to you find the smaller crimes and you find the bigger crimes and obviously you've got the ongoing story and then you would go back to the belfry which is where they're all set up for the day and then that's where you can sort of you know switch characters yeah um what i've started to do now is do a different character every night mm. That sort of rotate them, sort of thing. Yeah, and then yeah, and literally just rotate them. And I found I've, I've actually quite enjoyed doing that. But to begin with, I struggled because I remember telling you that Red Hood, I'm like, I'm just struggling with him. I can't get on with him. I'm not going to use him anymore, blah, blah, and Robin. And I was just going to stick with Batgirl and Nightwing. Mm. But one of the things you said to me is because you've got these different um, abilities that you can unlock. Like most games, these types of games now, just, you know, they're all of a type. You know, you unlock your different skills and stuff like that. But once I began to unlock the certainly the um, was it the night um, night mode is that what it was night nightmare mode was the one in in Arkham night no no knighthood oh sorry knighthood sorry yeah, knighthood. yeah you know where that kind of skill tree is very dedicated to you know these characters following on in Batman's footsteps yeah you know, and those skills are kind of almost like batman skills yeah um, but, but they're like an aspect of yes yeah yeah, yeah. The, the characters start to come to life a bit more because they operated differently when you had those skills yeah so then i began to see and i and i did use the characters slightly differently so the way that i used robin was a lot more tactical i wouldn't say stealth it was but it was more tactical i, I yeah. kind of fought a little bit more whereas like red hood once i unlocked what i was doing and i got a bit of an idea of him more I could go in a bit more brute force. Mm. Whereas kind of Batgirl and Nightwing were kind of, kind of all rounders, but had some cool differences between the two of them. Like, you know, Nightwing's much more acrobatic than all of them. And Batgirl's still got the acrobatic stuff, but she's also like a bit more tech savvy and stuff like that. Cause I've just unlocked the drone stuff that she can cool down. And and she's, she's a bit of a tank as well. So it's like, you've got the ability with her where, you know, if you get knocked out, you can get back on your feet and carry on. Yeah, kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, like, literally, so she, I've just unlocked tank. that. Yeah. <laughs> so I, yeah, so I kind of liked all that, and I liked all the cutscenes and the, and the, you know, the interactions between the, between them. The on the flip side, one of the things I did notice, I noticed it today, was that certain cutscenes repeated. Yeah, like the one I really noticed was when you get your knighthood, your first yes. knighthood ability, which is your which is your your movement basically. It's your yeah. it's your so you can moving around the city normally you can ride the bat cycle which we'll get onto in a bit you can Mm -hmm. grapple hook you can run all that kind of stuff you can unlock fast travel points later in the game but you unlock a unique kind of um i'm going to call it medium 
<laughs> medium travel <laughs> ability. So like Batgirl, you can glide. Nightwing gets a glider that you can use to go around, like a you know a, a technological glider. Robin mm-hmm. can teleport short ways, and Red Hood is he's got some kind of mystical I can walk on air kind of thing yeah. going on. But as soon as you, when you, when you kind of get to the point of unlocking that, they all have a conversation with Alfred. <laughs> It's the same conversation. And it's exactly the yeah. same conversation. Yeah. Yeah, I, I literally, I don't think there's any variation in it at no. all. Because no. I, I, I did them, like you're saying, you know, I, I was doing from early on, I was kind of like taking one character out and then having to go with another and stuff. So I got them kind of all on. Once I'd done one, I was like, right, I'm going to get the others to the same point. So I saw them in almost rapid, rapid succession. Yes, and it was like. I. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, that that's that's literally word for word. Because I watched yeah. them all just in case, but it was like, it's like, God, Alfred, you're such a whore. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah and it, I think you know, because those sorts of things are what takes you take me out of the the gameplay experience of a particular mm. character, and it, they're the sorts of things where I kind of start to think, you know, had I just been playing the one character all the way through, I wouldn't have had that. Yeah. You know, um, and I, and I think they're the sort of things where if they, t- there's just yeah. Overall, like I I love the game. I really enjoy the game, but the the more I'm playing it, there's more there's bits where I'm like, oh, if you could just t- if you just tighten that up. Yeah, there's some bits because I'm I'm kind of going through it a second time now, mm-hmm. and there's a certain point that you get to in the game, and I, I'm not sure if you hear that, so I'll just brush over it. Mm-hmm. But there's um a sequence that you go through. And I did that as Batgirl. And it was actually very customised for her. Okay. And the experience of it was was in that vein. So it's kind of like, next time I get to it, I want to try it as one of the other characters. Because um, that's one of the things that, that is, just while I'm talking about the, about, about the missions, the one, one, of my, one of my kind of, one of the drawbacks I find with it is I can't replay any of those story missions because actually I enjoyed them. And I enjoyed the cutscenes and it would be nice just to be able to replay it you know, as another character. Now I can do New Game Plus, which I'm doing, but that's yeah. just going through it once again. So yeah, see so what you're really talking about is what would have been good is like almost like a, a level select, so you can yes. jump straight to that bit. Exactly, yeah. yeah, and then just pick your character you want to do it as, and and yeah. and, and do that. Now apparently, because I was reading, um, I, I actually bought the uh, the collector edition book. It's kind of like half art book and half kind of strategy. Well, it's not even a strategy guide. It's half a list of what the missions are. Oh, okay. <laughs> it just doesn't tell you anything <laughs> about them particularly. Um, and like the collector was, it just says there are twelve murals you can take photos of. It doesn't tell you where they are. <laughs> kind of thing. Um, but in there, it was talking about basically that once you've done, because there are like um, there are uh, there are other cases you can do as well as the main case, and they all have a certain villain attached to them Mm -hmm. and supposedly once you've defeated that villain you can go to the trophy case in the belfry and redo the villain fight and then and then then apparently like it it keeps going so they get like it's the same it's almost like the same fight but it gets harder and harder and different challenges come in while you're doing it and you can do them co-op as well but that doesn't seem to have been enabled in the actual game um certainly not yet anyway Um, but yeah that's that's what i would like because i'd like to be able to see certain missions how they play out as other characters kind mm. of thing. And, and I kind of get it, you know, you've, you kind of want to see the story once through, but then once you've done that, I think it, you should have that option. You want to, once you've done that final mission, Oh, by the way, now you can go back and redo them if you want sort of thing would yeah. be nice. Yeah. It's not a game breaker. Don't get me wrong. No, I, no, no. And I mean, you know, whilst we're talking missions, it kind of leads us on to the, um, the concept of the actual city itself. And, you know, going back to that comment, they said about, you know, it's the most, was it the most sort of um the most dynamic and interactive gotham yeah. city yet and i can kind of see what they're saying and we said this it's kind of you know w- one of the things one of the games it kind of reminds me of was back in the day was um i think it was spider-man 2 yeah yeah that was the first one to bring this kind of element in yeah and we've got the random crimes and stuff and then obviously the more you played spider-man 2 the more you realized the crimes weren't that random they were kind of it's the same, same. four or five yeah, yeah you know get balloons so many like, times you could get so, a kid's balloon yeah you know someone's about to sort of jump off and and you know this follows a, a similar format except that there are more crime different types of crimes but you you still realize that after a while they're the same whether it's you know yeah. 10 
types. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, th- I, th- um, I think there's like t- 10 or 12, like what they call premeditated crimes. And then yes. probably six or seven variations of the minor crimes. Yeah. But for me, and I've been playing it for a significant amount of time, it doesn't bother me. Because no. cause in some ways, if you were a vigilante of a city, you probably are going to be dealing with similar stuff all the time people getting mugged and and then you know bank robberies and whatever yeah um but i love it i i love the kind of and i love the like the street crimes as opposed to the premeditated ones i love those as well but what i love about it is so my sort of got from night's experience normally i get up in the morning because i i do like an hour of writing every morning so i'll get up about five and I start writing at 5.30, so I normally have about half an hour. So what I'm doing now is, at the moment, is I'm playing Gotham Knights first thing in the morning. And when I when I go into the city, I have to clear the board. It's the first game I've done <laughs> like this. A lot of games, they have these sort of side missions. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not interested in that. Just give me the main, <laughs> yeah. give me the meat, you know. This is probably the first game I've played where like, I can't, I can't go back to the Belfry. I can't call the night done until I've stopped every crime in the city. I'm yeah, not talking well, about like the time trials and that stuff. That's by the by. But yeah. if I see a little white triangle, there's a crime there. I've got to get involved. Yeah. And that's it. It's like, you might be on your way to do something. And the, so the, I, I actually had a weird thing at one point. Cause I was, I was like, you, I was doing every single thing. And it's like, if I was on my way to a main mission and I saw like a crime was occurring, so I had to go and get it. Yeah, and then and then there was one point where I was thinking I start I started to get into I had to do I had to do a thing to myself where, which kind of immersed me a bit more where I was like yeah okay there's that little crime over there but I know full well there are three hostages strapped to, strapped to bombs over the other end of the city and I need <laughs> to get there to save them and it's okay because the others are actually out on patrol it's not just me <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I was like convincing myself that, and, and I think I think on one of them I actually convinced myself it was kind of like I was out doing stuff and I. I can't remember why, but I don't think I did all the premeditated ones. But then I went out the next night as another character. I was like, no, no, it's the same night. I'm just now someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it gives you that night, you know, when you finish it, you get like the summary of the night and it tells you how many you've done and stuff. Yeah. Which yeah. again, I like, because it gives you that feeling of actually, it helps with the immersion yes. somehow. Like, you know, yeah. that, that you get this kind of, and it, it doesn't have any effect on the story or anything, but it, te- it kind of shows, you you know, another night's past kind of thing. Yeah. And I, and I, and I like the fact that, so for example, the the one where you've got hostages with bombs strapped to them. I mean, the first one of the first times I did that, I messed up, <laughs> and um, I got spotted, and automatically they all went onto sort of a shorter timer. Yeah. And I think I managed to get one. And there was another two, and just as I got to it, it, it all went, it all went to crap. And basically, next minute, like night was like, we're gonna need some, we're gonna need an ambulance over here. And what I liked about it was. That was it. There was no. Would you like to replay the mission? Yeah, there was no. Yeah, there's no reset. It's you. There's no reset. You and I get you can't do that with the story because you know obviously otherwise you've got no story. But I, I kind of like that aspect because it did give you. The, it does give you that sense of once you get to a crime, you've got to stop that crime. Yeah. If you don't stop that crime, you know it's you've gonna, it's gonna yeah it's, it's gonna gone. carry on going without you. And yeah, and if you because I noticed I think I think one I was on my way somewhere and it drove me through a crime. And I went because I was on the on the bike. I, I was going to drop off uh, a, a, an organ to uh, oh yeah, yeah, to, yeah to the ambulance kind of thing. It was like one of those missions. And I drove through a crime, and then I got so far away from it that it was like crime failed, and it went off the map. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, but I only had like 20 seconds or whatever to get <laughs> where I needed to go, so I, I couldn't do anything about it, and I had to just suck Make it up. Judgment call, yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, and I like that. And unlike you say, it's not perfect. There's only a certain amount of things, and you do get to the point where you know, like there are strongholds, so gang gang strongholds. You can you kind of go in, and sometimes there's hostages to rescue. Sometimes there's things to sabotage. That, or sometimes you do a data download, that kind of stuff. But yeah. they're in the same sort of four or five buildings around the city. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But you know, the city's only so big. There's only so many hiding places <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So it kind of makes sense. And. um you know, and we'll get on to like uh, more of the combat and stuff a bit later. But I found that I finished the, finished the the story, and I still found myself going into the game and just doing the nights. So while yes, they are repetitive, and yes, you know, the game has its issues. It was it was just drawing me back still. Yeah, 
and and the, the the simple fact that it's you know what i'm going to do a night fighting crime i'm a crime fighter i almost didn't need the story at that point i'd done the story like if they they give me a dlc which is another you know another one of the uh the cases to do with another villain on the stuff epic i'm all good but actually i'm quite happy just dipping in and out especially because you can do it co-op i'm quite happy just dipping in and out and doing a night here and there and just having a bit of fun you know yeah and i think we we had a we had a crack on the co-op um and it was good fun you know and it, it's weird you know listening to you talk about how you play it now and i was kind of thinking like even though when we were playing co-op we were doing it together like it's a crime right we've got to do the crime together and obviously yeah. you could do sort of co-op moves together and stuff like that which is quite fun and whatever but then equally which i've never really thought about which in some ways suits the way you play um but how dare you sir yeah you know what i'm talking about <laughs> i do know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> that um that we could just not divvy up the city but you know there's nothing to stop us sort of going you know there's a crime up in sort of the old town or whatever and there's another one sort of down in um otisburg it's like you take that one i'll take this one you know and then we'll, we'll, we'll hook up at you know another place um or like we've got a bigger one like one of the sort of stronghold ones right we'll meet up for that one meet up for that yeah yeah you know and i hadn't even i hadn't even thought of playing it that way yeah and it's because you are because you're right it's like you know you play you play a court game normally and quite often in games not so much these days but quite often it'll be you've got too far from your partner kind of like you know and it it just like rubber bands you back in fact that happens in far cry 6 i was playing that with my mate down in bristol um and yeah that does that and that's obviously a new game but but this and i think um because i think ghost the last two ghost recons games do it as well where you can pretty much just join in the map and you can go off if you want sort of thing yeah Um, but this like you say yeah you can because we did we never went that far from each other but yeah you're right i get distracted easily um and i'd see like um potentially a batarang and not collected although by that point i think i'd got most of them or like a crime out the corner because we were like I don't know, probably a block or two apart or something, traversing to the next thing. I'd seen this crime. And I think I just went, crime, excuse my French, and, and, and battered off. <laughs> um, <laughs> while, while you kind of went on, then you turn around and went, where the heck are you? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm nearly done. I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's just, and again, you know, I play, I've played with Amy Corp as well a little bit. And I, I yeah, I, I just like it. And, and again, you know, going back to, we talked about the combat and you could do some like co-op moves and stuff. And yes, it's simple to do. The combat is simple. And I'll be honest, it does suffer a little bit from not having a block option. You know, it's it's basically attack, ranged attack, dodge, um, and then your special ability sort of thing. So there is no, you can't do the blocks and counters like you can in things like, you know, Shadow of Mordor and Arkham. I think it was Arkham that really kind of sold that kind of style of gameplay and that really fluid combat. Yeah, I mean, but, they, they kind of do some, you know, you can kind of do a, the dodge, and if you do it in the right way, you can do like a perfect You can do a counter and stuff, yeah. Yeah, but, it's, yeah, but you, you know, in yeah in Arkham, that, that, they, they nailed it. They, they just nailed it. Yeah, they, they nailed the free flow combat. And, and yeah. honestly, Shadow of Mordor, which I know you can't play spiders, yeah. um, and Shadow of War are even better than Ar- the Arkham games like that. Right. Um, just purely because I always found with, no, in fact, no, I'm not even going to mention it. But anyway, because it's a digression. But yeah, I say the, the combat in this is simple. Now, one of the one of the criticisms I saw early on was that a lot of the enemies, especially later in the game, become like punch sponges. And it's like the combat just gets really tedious because it takes you so long to take certain enemies out and stuff. Yeah. And then I literally saw a comment somewhere which was just drop the difficulty to easy kind of thing. And it sounds like, a, ooh, 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 now I'm playing on easy. But actually, some of the fights are still challenging. It's just that you're not there for 10 minutes trying to take down one of the bruiser guys with the shield, you know? Yeah. yeah, So so it's, yes, it's, it is easier, but it's not easy peasy, lemon squeezy sort of thing. Like, you know, there is still an element of, of thought to it and you still have to use the right tactics and all the rest of it. And as we said earlier, you know, playing the characters in the correct way, you know, you can, you can go in and just basically just melee everyone to death with whoever you are, but red hoods a lot slower to attack so he gets and he's a lot slower to dodge so you, you have to really time your dodges properly and stuff mm. or you get lamped however when he does land a punch it hurts people yeah, yeah and if yeah, you, I mean... and if you get people from range you know that they, they you know, if you, especially if you're using the actual um rather than just using the ranged attack button if you're holding down the left trigger and aiming 
you know, you can take out an entire gang before they get anywhere near you with him. Like, you know, yeah. which you can't do with the other characters because their ranged attacks are not as effective and they're slower, so the enemies can dodge them. Yeah. You know, um, and the same like you were saying with Robin, you know, it's he's the stealth one, but it's kind of more like, you know, he can he can stealth attack characters that other players can't. When you go and if you if you do an aerial attack on someone, he will instantly drop a smoke bomb so you can vanish back up back up into the onto the rooftops kind of thing. And you can yeah. almost have a bit of that nightmare mode play from the Arkham games. Not to the same extent, but it's it's there if you want it, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and Nightwing becomes, you know, he just becomes super affecting at do- dodging. In fact, the, <laughs> the funniest fight I had I had in it, I happened to be playing as Nightwing in um a Harley Quinn mission. And it was like it was basically it was like it was just like two acrobats just bouncing around. We were just doing hand backflips off each other. Basically, <laughs> it was it was like it was called cool. one of us got a punch at some point. <laughs> it was, it, but I was sat there just giggling to myself as I did it because I could almost imagine it going down like that if they met. Like you know, it's almost just trying to outclass each other rather than yeah. out fight sort of thing. And you know, and and, and uh, again, just some of the characterization that come out in not just in the cutscenes and stuff, but even in like the banter. The other things you say when you take people out, the characters speak correctly. Yeah. You know, they, they, yeah, they might not be your version of those characters at the start of the game. I mean, I struggled with the voices. I'll be honest. At the start, everyone's voicing it because I'm so used to Kevin Conroy and and, and Tara Strong and um, all the all the classics kind of thing. But by the end of it, I was like, I really like these characters now, <laughs> and yeah. I really like the voice. Yeah, they, they they're their own individuals now. You know, and and um, I'm often one for trying to tell people, you know, don't try and, you know, don't judge like Batfleck based on Christian Bale because they're very different kind of takes on Batman kind of thing. But I was doing it at the start of the game. I'm like, this isn't this isn't my Batman voice, you know. But by the end, I was like, no, no, these are they're their own personalities. And because I've been through their personal stories as well, because they do have a personal story each as well as you're going through the main quest yeah. and having seen all four of them play out because I made sure I did kind of thing. I'm like, I felt connected to them all. Yeah. And and I think that's the strength of the game, maybe a bit more in some ways than, than the, than the combat mechanics and the, you know, the, certainly than the stealth, but the, the actual storytelling and the character building throughout, I, I personally found really good. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. But I think, you know, with the combat stuff, I think what I liked about it as well is because, I could just, oh, I'm going to fire up a bit of Gotham Knights and just stick it on and I could play it for like five, ten minutes and then come out of it. Yeah. But I didn't have to sort of then go, all right, remind me what's the button to do this and how do I do that again? Yeah. And it did make it easier for me to switch characters and stuff because it was, because it is the same controls, mm. you know. And like I said, you know, I love a beat-em-up. So that's my thing. I mean, I you know, I, I grew up playing games like Streets of Rage, which are literally just button bashers. Yeah. So for me, you know, I'm 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 less nuanced maybe than gamers of today. So I, I I was more than happy to just you know kick ass by just hitting buttons like that. But like I said, the more I went on, the more I unlocked the abilities, especially the momentum abilities. What I then realised was, you know, I could take out some of the bruises relatively quickly, even though I'm, I wasn't playing I wasn't playing on easy. I would I was hitting them much more of the momentum stuff. I was dodging, dodging, getting yeah. my momentum up, and then hitting them with that, which I wouldn't necess- which I wouldn't have done in other games. Other games I wouldn't necessarily use the special moves. One because I could never remember what they are, mm. and two because normally just your your normal, you know, normal and hard attack is enough. Is enough to get you through, yeah. Yeah. Whereas this one, you kind of like right. I've actually stuck. I've got to hit him with some special moves just to kind of weaken them enough, and then I would go in and finish them off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know. But as I said, I'm not as far through as... I think I'm relatively far through. Something's just happened. Like It feels a bit like a halfway point to me. And I, I still haven't got that set. Sometimes I've got a sense of, you know, maybe I should have whacked it down to you because it's taken ages. But that's de- that has depended on the character that I've been playing as. Yeah. And, and again, how you approach it. Because yeah. like you say, some of those punch sponges, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're robbing and you can sneak up behind them, they're they gone game over in it game over for him yeah, yeah. um I, but i mean there are some annoying <laughs> anyway, no i mean I, yeah there are some annoying ones yeah. uh, but again that. there there are techniques to take him out quicker yeah um 
I just wish they wouldn't get back on their feet again sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um, because I think we're kind of running, you know, we're, we're pretty much at the end of things to say, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. But, but one of the things I kind of want to say briefly is, yes, it's another Arkham, Arkham Knight thing, but I despised any, you know, any game which can make me despise the Batman build of a passion has done something wrong. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, as much as I love Arkham Knight, that the Batmobile left a completely sour taste in my mouth, which kind of sullied the game a little bit, especially towards the end. Yeah. And what I loved about this game is I was I, I missed the Batmobile because the way they used the sort of bat cycle or whatever it is in this one is the way I wish they'd used the Batmobile. Yeah. Where it's literally just to get you from A to B. Yes, you can shoot from it if you want to, but but essentially it's a mode of transport. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a mode of transport, and it does because you know I've mentioned you you can unlock fast travel, but honestly, I very rarely use the fast travel. I, I'd I'd like just traversing normally around the city because then you do you get all the crimes. But as you say, you're on the bike, you're going from A to B. It's manoeuvrable enough. You can you can it's fast enough to get you from, from A to B, even if it's opposite end of the city within a reasonable amount of time. Yeah. But then you've got that ability where if you see a crime and it's near, you, you just basically jump off the, the bike and you're straight into using your grapple and your gliders yeah. and stuff. And it, it's just, it works. Yeah. It, you, you can get across the city really sharply, you know, yeah. with the combination of, like I said, grappling the, the bike, glider. One of the reasons I, I use the fast travel, I'm, I'm like you, I don't often use fast travel. One of the reasons I use the fast travel in this one is because I quite like the fact that you get that kind of super bat wing type thing, which drops yeah. you off. But it doesn't, you don't just appear, it kind of drops you and you're kind of falling through the sky. And depending, especially, I think it works the best for me with like Batgirl and um, Nightwing. Nightwing, yeah. Where yeah. you can switch to the cape or the kind of trapeze and then you can kind of literally just glide in. Yeah. Um, and it almost feels a bit like your special forces. You've been, you've been dropped into like the target zone and then you glide in the rest of the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I think that, and that's one of the things I wanted to sort of touch on. I, I think the way they've handled the transport around the city, I think it's great. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. So I've only got a couple of more things to say, and it's I don't really want to finish on one of them. So I'm going to I'm going to skip it, to be honest, because, um, yeah. But the the other thing I just want to say is there is the so the four player mode, the heroic assault mode is coming out on the 29th of November. So that's in a few days as we're recording with the 24th now. And that's basically that that's separate from the main story campaign. um, And it supports up to four players in an online co-op and provides dedicated arena-like environment with specific objectives to complete and enemies to defeat on each floor, and there are 30 floors to get through. So that's another way to play that should be fun, I think. Yeah, I'm interested, because I don't I don't know if they've put any trailers out for it. I'm interested to see how they do it. When they sort of say there's 30 floors, is it just a case of you just do the floor and then, you know, it then loads up the next floor, or is it a case of you actually... Or go upstairs or something to the next floor. Do you know what I mean? I I think I think it'll be the former. I think. Yeah, I know, which is a bit of a shame. It's like those sort of tower modes you get in, like yeah. um, like Zelda and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but then it does, you know, it gives you, uh, oh, we'll do a floor and then you can hop out, hop back in again, kind of thing. And it, I think mm. it's going to play a bit more like the um, a game that it does have similarities to, which is the Avengers game, and kind of like when you're doing like the quick missions on that, yeah, so like a drop in, drop out thing. Um, but yeah, it's. Just just to sum up my, my sort of thoughts, I, I've enjoyed the hell out of this game. I'm still playing it. I'm I've restarted again. Um having played, I say I played through it through the main campaign. I've done all the side collectibles and stuff, which another positive, there's enough to keep you interested, but not too many that you get overwhelmed by it. Yeah. It's like even the you know, I, I hate racing in games, but there's like seven to do of the of the bat the bat cycle one so I, I, just, okay. I just did the kind of thing like you know and and you do you kind of get a bit of a feel more for how the bike operates and stuff as well so they, they kind of were doing it for that reason but again you didn't need to do it but you can if you want and there's not too many that if you start and want to finish it it's going to take you hours you know yeah um so yeah so i i really enjoyed everything about it yes it has its flaws yes it's not arkham it but it was never going to be 
but I, yeah, I, there is there's far more that I like about it than I don't, and I'm st- I'm still playing it now. I played a few, probably ten or fifteen nights just randomly after finishing the story before si- deciding to go back and actually do New Game Plus, uh, yeah. which is you know it basically starts again, but everything's at the level you were when you finished sort of thing. So it's like you just got like the tougher fights earlier on and things, yeah, um, and you've got all your abilities so you can glide out the gate and stuff, and yeah, it's it's just a solid it's a solid game in yeah. my opinion. Yeah, I, I kind of don't know, try to regret. I echo everything that you said. You know, I 100 percent agree. In you know, I, I really, really enjoyed it, and or enjoying it because I'm still playing. You know, I'm still playing it, and mm. you know, I will play it to completion, and I, I, I will continue to dip out, dip in and out of it. I think, and sort of just having my night here and there, where I just go and fight a bit of crime. Yeah, and the, the, you know, people can look at this one or two ways. Um, they're doing a. It's, it's come down dramatically in price because of uh, they're doing like a Black Friday deal at the moment. Uh, uh, what? Sorry, on Gotham, Gotham Nights. Nights. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It's, um, I think it's. Um, I want to say it's like forty percent drop. Well, that's that's good. That's that's definitely worth it. Um, I could I could I could be wrong, but it, it's it's something like that. It's a, it's a good old drop. Yeah. Um, I think again. I think I think part of that is down to the the rating of leading to poorer sales because mm. I've I've seen something recently where the company are working on another game, but it's not a sequel, which is disappointing. And I, I do hope they are going to support it with some more DLC and stuff as well down the line at the very least. Um, but yeah. I, I I'd love to see a second game. Um, and yeah, especially as I say, if people pick it up, the other thing to do is if you're still on the fence, just go and watch the opening cinematic, and then bear the discount in mind as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because the opening yeah. cinematic, cinematic is on youtube and yeah. it's it's relatively long so settle in but get a get a beer or a coke or a tea or whatever your beverage of preference is 10 minutes yeah and just settle settle down and watch it you'll you'll genuinely think you've come in at the end of a movie yeah really really enjoying it um and i think the best way to say say is what you said i i think i think it's a solid game i'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it yeah and to me in this day you know for me that's my benchmark for a good game am i having fun with it am i enjoying it yeah <laughs> yeah yeah am i not getting frustrated with this yes yeah right <laughs> do i keep moving back to it yes yeah. another tick you know it's yeah it's it's a win for me yeah because there's games i've played that are great games you know have had you know ridiculously high scores and great games but i've just got so frustrated with them for varying reasons i've ended up just stop pl- i've just stopped playing them you know yeah absolutely so uh, yeah this one hasn't done that for me so yeah cool well thanks everyone for listening kind of hope to see you in gotham city if i don't see you i hope to hear about you being in gotham city yourselves let us know what you think if you've got the game let us know um whether you're going to pick it up let us know if you hate the game or why because you know all of, all opinions are valid and yeah you know, all criticism is, is fair as long as it's as long as it's supported. Don't just rail on it because that's yeah. the only thing we ask. <laughs> it's give us reasons. But B, where can they do that? So you can get in contact with us via email, which is the geeks at geeksyndicate.co.uk. Uh, we're on Twitter as long as for as long as Twitter lasts, um, <laughs> which is at Geek Syndicate. And we have a uh, private Facebook group, but um, link will be in the show notes to the Facebook group. All you've got to do is knock on the door and I will let you in. Excellent. Well, thanks, B, once again. It's, uh, it's been good talking to you, as it has indeed been playing with you with this one. Um, yes. So, yeah, we will be back soon with another review of something, I'm sure. But until then, let's go protect this city. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I, I was gonna, am huge. See, I, I was going to do a you have failed this city thing, and then I, that made me sad because I can't play as Green Arrow in it. All right. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe there'll be some DLC. I feel that, <laughs> that, that might be a bit too far for them, but you never know. Yeah, it, it'd be good. Extra playable character, Green Arrow. I'm in. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> you failed this city. <laughs> right. Yeah. Brilliant. Night all. Night.